Are you tired of feeling overlooked and underestimated? Hi, I'm Tammy North, the Introverted Executives Coach. If you're an introverted executive or you're ready to rise to senior leadership, but you're struggling to be seen as a high potential, this podcast is for you. Have you ever felt a sinking sensation or you know that unsettling feeling that despite your sincere efforts focused on your customer and even though you are always trying to make the world a better place in some way and even though you're motivated and driven from a heartfelt purpose that you are deliberately being undermined at work? If so, you're not alone. We've all been there at some point. When you're working in a large organization or corporation, it can be very challenging, especially if you thrive in that deep work and meaningful, you know, those one-on-one interactions. Not to mention that you truly want to believe that everybody else is coming from a similar good and moral motivation as you are. You want to believe that everybody is on the same team and that everybody is moving in the same direction. I know, I get it. But first, I think it's very important for me to remind you that your purpose-driven motivation and your general positive belief in humanity is not a handicap. In fact, it is a strength that provides you with unique attributes, you know, such as creativity, focus, that knack for deep listening and connection, you know, your ability to understand where everybody else is coming from and your willingness to tackle those really hard problems that other people wouldn't even attempt because they're unable to see the future possibility that seems so crystal clear to you. Your introverted personality is a gift. Embrace it. However, in an environment where extreme assertiveness is often rewarded, not to mention when you're driven primarily by purpose, you don't have any desire at all to succeed just for the sake of succeeding. There may be times when you find out that somebody who you trusted and who you did think was 100% on your side was in fact working directly behind the scenes to block progress of something that you care about. It's hard to comprehend, but there are a small number of people who do spend most of their energy trying to stop other people from moving forward. I know I don't understand understand them either, but we all know they're out there. They are more concerned with how they could be diminished when others shine bright. It seems that any small error or mistake you make is their big chance to pounce and pounce hard. And sometimes it seems like they are literally lurking in the shadows waiting for you just to show a little bit of weakness. I know you could go up to them a hundred times in a month and a year and ask them for their partnership and for their collaboration and they will smile, they will look you in the eye and they'll shake your hand, nod their head and say, of course, I'm on your team. If you are idealistic like I tend to be, and if you're very busy trying to make the world a better place, you might not realize who these people are soon enough. And in spite of your belief, including your belief in them, eventually something happens which might completely take the wind out of your sails. You'll think that if it had been a physical punch, it would have hurt less. And it's at that moment you discover that they have actively gone behind your back and directly worked against you. It's in these moments that you might literally feel undermined, cornered. It is a sickening feeling. So depending on how close you thought you were to this person who unexpectedly turned on you, it might cause you to question all the relationships that you've made all across the organization or even in your life, especially if the person working against you was outwardly well-respected. You might start to doubt your own ability to read people and you might start losing trust in other people. And worst of all, you might start having doubt in yourself. So that's what we're going to talk about in this episode. We're going to dive deep into how you can address these issues head on. I want you to hold on to your confidence and I want you to ensure that your reputation remains intact and that you remember you are a hardworking, well-respected professional. You remain worthy of continuing to move forward into the full possibility of all that your future holds. I did have one story several years ago when I had somebody who worked on my team and I had multiple people telling me that this person was disrespecting me behind my back. I honestly did not want to believe that was the case, and I actually didn't believe it. Even though, I guess looking back, I had seen 
some of the indications also. But after all, I'd known him for so many years and I thought that we worked very well together. I do have an ability to get along with very difficult personalities. Sometimes some of the feelings I get about people like this, I just want to chalk it up to them being difficult, which is not the same thing as undermining. I really like this person, generally speaking, and I had high respect for the career that they had built for themselves. Whenever we worked one-on-one, I felt we had a great rapport, and over the course of a decade, I had built a pretty good trust in this person. But I found out later that there were several changes I was trying to make where this person decided to go against me behind my back while telling me to my face that they were executing in alignment with my wishes. And it wasn't until one more minor situation occurred where I accidentally caught them actively going behind my back that I was confronted with the full truth. And it was at that moment that the entire relationship played back in very fast succession in my mind. And I realized that they never had my back at all. And I guess I knew it the whole time after I looked in the rearview mirror. I just wanted to believe that everything was okay. Weirdly, in that case, it happened just before they changed jobs and left the company. Looking back, the fact that they were leaving might have been the reason I found out because I think they essentially quit trying to even hide that they were doing it at all. And then I had another situation where the supervisor I was working for had planted subject matter experts within our team who were his friends of 30 years. And in that situation, some of those people had also been my friends for 20 years. But there came a point where I realized that things I was saying in small groups, I tried very hard not to gossip. So it wasn't that. It was more like tasking I was giving or direction I was giving to the project team. That if they thought I was doing the wrong thing for any reason, even if it was just slightly wrong, they would run to my supervisor and tell him every detail of what I was doing. And therefore, whenever I would see him later, my supervisor, he would say, oh, I know you were doing this, this, and this. I see what you're doing, but you might want to be careful. At that point, I realized every word that came out of my mouth to my project team, especially if those specific individuals were in the room, had to be very measured. And that's a difficult place to be. In the project management situation, I went to the people directly and I told them, I know you're talking to this person. I'm fully aware of it. So just understand that anything I say, I'm 100% fine with you telling him and I will no longer say anything that I don't yet want him to know. And I will reserve that until I have the opportunity to talk to him myself. And after that, weirdly, those people didn't come to my meetings as often. And that was fine. Everything worked out great. And that was a very assertive way of me just dealing with that situation. I want to prevent these moments from happening to you. And I want you to spot these traps as soon as you possibly can. I believe if you nip them in the bud, it will be better for you. And it'll actually be better for the person themselves. Nobody wants to be this kind of, you know, evil, rotty kind of personality. Nobody really wants that. There is some psychology behind that on their side. And I think that if you directly ask them in their best light, that is not who they would want to be. And definitely this kind of behavior does hurt the overall organization because it erodes trust. Trust is one of the most important things that a group of colleagues can have at any given organization or workplace. So what's behind it when somebody is undermining? What drives them? Well, we'll talk about five reasons that somebody might be exhibiting these undermining behaviors. On their side, they have things going on in their own mind that cause this. So one is they might be feeling insecure. You know, when people feel threatened or insecure about their own abilities, they might try to undermine others to protect their turf. In that case, I don't, in any of my two stories, I don't think insecurity was the reason. And then there might be jealousy. Sometimes people are just jealous. If somebody's envious of another person's success, they might resort to undermining uh, just so they feel better about themselves. And I don't think that was the problem in my situations either. Not either one of them. Okay, then there's another reason might be competitiveness. You know, when you find that one person who is bound to determine they are going to be the most successful person in the organization, those people do this kind of thing a lot when they're trying to be competitive for the wrong reasons. They aren't trying to be the best at helping our customer. They're basically trying to be seen as the best. So they are more quickly promoted. And when that is their sole motivation for all the things they do, then 
it is possible that they also do some undermining behind the scenes. And then there's ego protection. So when you have people who can never admit that they have any limitations or that they've ever done anything wrong, maybe they've been at the organization for 30 years, instead of acknowledging somebody else has done a good job, they'd rather undermine them so that they will feel more superior, so that their ego will feel better. And then there's ingrained biases. And this is where I think my first story actually came from. It's reality, but everybody has some type of unconscious biases. And sometimes these unconscious biases are strong, so strong in a person that they will cause this kind of behavior. When people hold some type of prejudice, like a gender bias or a racial bias, or maybe there's some sort of superiority bias, like they actually think they're better, or they actually think that, you know, perhaps they think you haven't had enough experience or knowledge for some reason, they might judge whether or not you should be their peer or equal to them. There's, that's the kind of biases I'm talking about that they might unconsciously, or maybe even consciously, who don't fit their expectations. And I think that's kind of where my first story came from. The second one, I think that was a lack of trust on the part of the supervisor and then the people who had been working with that person for so long. That's just how they did business and they had been doing business like that for 30 years. And at that workplace, you basically just had to know that's how it was and you could choose to stay or you had the opportunity to go look other places. So when you are dealing with the fact that you realize or you think that you might be undermined at work, it's really important. The first step is to recognize the situation in the first place. And in my first story, I honestly didn't, even though I had seen some signs, I didn't want to believe them. And therefore I didn't recognize it until it was right in my face. But being undermined often comes in these very subtle forms at first. It could just be somebody stealing your ideas or they could interrupt you during meetings, talk over you. They might give you less important tasks, even though you are far more capable. It could be somebody on your team that just shares negative information with leadership about you so that you start to seem like you aren't as awesome as they previously thought you were. Or it could be one of your peers who actively works behind the scenes to make themselves look better by pulling you down. And it's in these moments that it kind of reminds me of the Game of Thrones. You know, everybody trying to get that one position. And I don't play that game. When I'm in an organization like that, where I feel like everybody's trying to get one position, I try very hard to find another, to find different opportunities out of that culture. Being aware of these situations is essential, but you don't have to blame yourself or question your own worth or your own abilities. This is all about them and it is not about you. The good news is you have have an introvert's intuition and you have the ability to decode these wolves in sheep's clothing. While these little intricacies in behavior, you know, the undermining, people don't usually do that overtly. So it's your ability to pick up on these nuances and to read between the lines that you will notice that, you know, the shift in the atmosphere that other people might overlook. If you actually pay attention to these little moments that doesn't seem quite right, when you really allow yourself to trust your intuition in those moments, you'll notice these things much faster. I mean, there is always room for a margin of error. It's possible that you could think somebody's undermining you and they're not. And we'll talk about that as well. But well, and that's one of the reasons I think that in my situation, I didn't want to notice it because I, I really wanted to believe that I was probably wrong. Trust can be a fragile bridge and any kind of misjudgment or undermining like this will send massive ripples through it and enough of those ripples will cause the trust to collapse completely. So given your intuitive skills, how can you recognize when somebody is subtly undermining you, especially in the workplace? One thing you might start to notice is just general inconsistencies. A person who's undermining you might consistently agree with you in private, but in public, they'll say something a little bit different or they'll give some doubt or opinions. And when they do this and it was happening in my situation. You might be in front of a more senior person and, but you're talking one-on-one to your underminer and they'll be like, oh yeah, I agree. I see what you're saying. But then you end up in front of the more senior person and they will say something 180 out from what they were saying 1v1. And it'll be kind of surprising because you will think, well, just 30 minutes ago, you said something different. And when that starts happening, you'll start to think, do I need to be careful? You'll notice it. And it's in those moments, you might want to be more direct and just say, hey, I noticed that you said this to me, but when we were in a, in a room full of people, you said 
this? And what was the difference? And I would have appreciated if you were just straight up with me and said that you didn't agree with me when we were talking in person. Something else you might notice is evasive behavior. If somebody's avoiding direct communication with you, or they're always unavailable for one-on-one discussions, or they dodge answering your straightforward questions, there's something probably going on there. And these behaviors can signal that there is something else, you know, that they might have an ulterior motive or something underneath the surface. One thing is giving credit where credit's due. If somebody is a strong underminer, then they might take credit for your work or they might downplay your contributions so that they can upplay theirs or somebody else that they really want to support. And if you find that this is happening all the time, I mean, it probably comes from one or two or three people. It won't be from the whole organization. If there are people that are consistently sidelining you, then it's essential for you to address it at your earliest opportunity. And then another thing you can do is just listen to the grapevine. I always try to stay away from gossip and it's not always reliable. People read people wrong. People have thoughts. So I really try to avoid talking about people. But when you're getting consistent whispers about the same thing over and over and over, and if somebody keeps telling you, you know, so-and-so, I don't like the way they talk about you when you're not in the room or so-and-so, They say this about you when you're not in the room, or they said something completely different than you when you were in the room. Those kind of things, if you hear enough of it, you might want to give it some of your attention. When you're a great listener, then you probably get access to a lot of information because people probably spend a lot of time talking to you. And in my case, I had numerous people telling me that that my first story person was actively undermining my authority and my reputation and my direction. And in the second case, I also had numerous people telling me that these three people were going to report everything I said to my supervisor. So I was aware of it in both cases. Just in the first one, I just did not want to believe it. Okay, then the one thing I want to tell you is to trust your intuition. If something feels off, it probably is. So while I don't want you to jump to conclusions, it is time for you to start going into some amount of protection mode so that you can take care of your feelings and your own mental health and that you can start to kind of dig into any of those concerns and deal with it head on. Your intuitive insights combined with your ability to deeply understand human behavior, it makes you so good at navigating the maze of of professional relationships, which is how you've got to where you are now. But even so, you should always remain vigilant to make sure that your trust is well placed. One of the best things you can do in this situation is just being assertive. Communication is crucial. And while being very assertive might feel unnatural to you, it is a skill that you can develop with practice. So express your thoughts and your concerns confidently. Maintain eye contact with the person you're talking to and use clear, concise language about your expectations and about the way you feel and what you believe is occurring. Stand up for yourself. Stand up for your ideas. And it's okay to be open to constructive criticism because the goal here is if you can get to a place in the relationship with this with your colleague where th- you can rebuild trust and you can just have open conversation, that would be ideal. It's oftentimes that you actually can get back to that place. Sometimes people are doing it, and especially if you're talking about the insecurity and kind of that end of the spectrum, that those people might not even be fully aware of what they're doing. And when you call them out on it directly, professionally, and assertively call them out on it, that they will often shift their behaviors. When you're having a really tough time navigating your corporate journey, especially if you're feeling undermined, a mentor is a really good place to start. Look for somebody in your organization or even external who's navigated these types of situations in the past, and they'll be able to give you advice, support, you a listening ear, and probably most importantly, reassurance that what you're experiencing 100% can be overcome. Make sure you're building your support network. You have talked about it in another episode back in the feed about having your own fan club. You know, that group of people who who are your people. You just remember you're the mix of colleagues, friends, family, people who understand your situation and can also you know, just give you emotional support, prop you up, just help you understand that you're still awesome, even though there's one or two people who are trying to cause a mess behind the scenes. Another thing I would do is if you find that the situation at work is affecting your ability to think clearly, or if it's really causing you to have anxiety, it is essential to seek professional help. And especially for this exact type of situation, I do think an executive coach or a career coach who specializes in workplace issues like this can help you untangle what's going on and help give you more tools to engage directly. When you feel undermined like this, it will lead to stress, which can turn to other physical problems. So make sure that you're taking care of yourself physically, you know, exercising, just getting enough sleep. And if this is impacting your sleep or causing 
person you need to have any physical challenges, definitely deal with it as soon as possible. Okay, so if you've tried everything and you are still feeling undermined and you think there's really nothing else you can do about it, then it really might be time to consider other opportunities. Sometimes the culture in some organizations is such that that is just how it is. And that was kind of my second story. There's just a low amount of trust and only a handful of people who had the trust. And therefore those people were going to undermine you. And that was just how it was. But on the contrary, when you're strong enough to recognize that a situation is not serving you, it is okay to look for other opportunities. And an executive coach can help you with that as well. As you go through your journey, journey and your career in life, you're bound to cross paths with somebody who for some reason is going to attempt to undermine you. But there's a bright side is that these moments don't have to be the be all end all. In the grand scheme of things, these are just blips on our radar. They don't define who you are. They don't define your potential and they don't determine where you're headed. Your dreams and your goals are far too valuable to be swayed by the actions of one person. Do not be swayed by one person, by one rotten apple in the bunch. What truly matters is how you react. It's about addressing the situations head on, reminding yourself of your worth and not allowing negativity to knock you off course. These moments can be a catalyst for your growth, making you much more resilient and determined. So when you encounter these bad apples along your journey, see it as an opportunity for growth. Embrace it with a hopeful spirit, knowing that your response is what will ultimately define your path. Your career and life are an adventure waiting to unfold, and it's your ability to navigate through these challenges that will make the journey truly remarkable. You can connect with me at Introverted Executive on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. If you're ready for executive coaching to help you achieve your biggest career goals, subscribe to my weekly Rise and Shine newsletter. There, you'll find out when my program opens for new clients, and you'll also receive weekly tips and activities to continue to make a bigger impact in your own powerful way. You'll find all the information and links down in the show notes. See you next week.